Anyone who's experienced the death of a pet knows just how heartbreaking that can be. The tale of a middle-aged woman so devastated by her dog's death that she had to be placed on life support is an extreme example. But pet owners who report trouble eating and sleeping even months after a loss are common. And Kansas City mental health professionals say that a pet's death can trigger chronic depression. At the Struan Center in South Kansas City, psychologist Dr. Raphael Smith runs a regular pet grief therapy session. Recently, KCPT got a rare opportunity to witness one of their meetings. I'm here for Chewy. He suddenly developed cancer of the spleen. And we had to have him euthanized. He came into our lives right after some serious heart problems that I had had. And he was a big assist for me in the recovery. He was, I said, my Prince Charming, because I think he's the best guy I've ever picked. I take him out to a park, and they were in complete attention on a squirrel, a squirrel. It looked so innocent. And the park had a hole in the fence, and I found him on the side of Warnell Road. I was lost without him. We were together constantly. I'm retired, my wife works, so he and I were home all day. And suddenly there was no little dog in the house anymore. I felt so much guilt, so much guilt. Still can't drive down Warren Road. She died in my arms after she was euthanized. Um, we'd fought kidney disease together for seven years, uh, but it finally became too much and um, she took her last breath in my arms and I miss her so much. <laughs> One of the first tools I think I provide to individuals who come to me uh, with a grief over their pet loss experience is being able to talk about it, to being able to put words and verbalize the emotions that's going on inside. I had lost my mom in a wrongful death three years ago. I lost my father a year ago, and this was the third loss. And I have no family. And it just gutted me. And if it wasn't for this group, I really, really, really appreciated it. Have you gotten a better sense of what gift they have left you with? Chewy gave me the gift of life. I was in the hospital twice within a week of each other. Almost died. At one point, I was given no hope. I came home and he came to live with us. And he made it possible while I was sitting there for all those weeks convalescing to realize how lucky I was and to have him there cuddled up in my lap or next to me on the bed. And I had a companion when my wife wasn't there. Nobody liked my food as much as Rhett. <laughs> I, I never cooked for a man that was so appreciative. <laughs> uh, the nose would twitch and there was no way you were getting him out of there. Here we are for some of us, it's been a year or, or so later and other people are still wondering why we're grieving. How do you explain that to them? One of my friends, I mentioned something and she said, oh, you're still having a hard time with that? Mm -hmm. I didn't really say anything, but I think the look on my face and I got a beautiful card. She just wanted to apologize for her reaction and to let me know mm -hmm. that I really have um, opened up her mind to really understanding the love that uh, an animal and a person can have. Grief is so fearful for people, yeah. no matter what, that they don't, they don't know what to say. They don't mm -hmm. want to go there for fear. It'll, it's contaminating them somehow. Mm -hmm. They'll catch it. There's this great description about how the animals are there when you go to bed, mm -hmm. when you get up, during all the most intimate times of your life, mm -hmm. you are in your underwear in front of them, like all the time. <laughs> That's a, another good way of trying to help people understand. It's like, this is a family member. Right. And unlike children and adolescents, they don't suddenly become self-sufficient. <laughs> they will always rely on us. I think death is so taboo. We don't talk about it. No one teaches us how to deal with it. Even when a human is lost, people say the dumbest things. You know, I'm sure you have heard them. One of the questions that gets very annoying is, are you going to get another dog? That just aggravates the heck out of me. We usually start off with some anger 
we usually start off with some guilt. Mm -hmm. And if we've had to make that decision to euthanize, we experience a lot of regret. How have you dealt with those three top emotions? What I do is I write down everything I can think about. You know, I think about the way she snored, or I think about the way she did this cat dance. My other little dog, the little white one, she wouldn't get out of the car. She wouldn't eat. She, I, she wouldn't do anything. She'd squat. So I decided, we're desperate. Petfinders.com, this one's cuddly, I'll take it. Just like that. And be it wrong or right, to see them wrestling and playing together is a healthy way to go on. It makes me compare to what I lost, but the new little guy needed a home too. I'm so grateful that I don't think I would have realized how grateful that I am if I had, hadn't heard other people's stories. You know, sometimes we laugh a lot in this group, but we we also can feel for, feel very you know comfortable crying. This group has been a godsend for me because we all have the same problem and we all understand each other. Where else can we go once a month and talk about our fur babies? That's right. That's right. <laughs> Grief can lead to more serious depression and by assisting individuals in recognizing the signs helps them to better accept the loss and to move back to a healthy perspective after it. Producer Justin Bond taking us inside the Struan Center, which offers pet loss, grief counseling, and support groups. Learn more at thelocalshow.org.